Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are continuing Eddie Brock Week here with Venom on Trial, written by Larry Hama and art by Josh Hood. And so, uh, so yeah, this story, much different, much better. I love, it starts off, Eddie Brock is going back to one of his old hideouts, uh, you know, which is like underground, and he's like, all right, I'm just going to go back to one of my hideouts, see what happens, you know, like take a rest. All this stuff's been going on, it's crazy, fighting Dirt Nap and all this stuff, and t stopping criminals. Uh, I, you know, and I think he uh, even starts off, no, that was another book. He start, There's another, yeah, it's coming up, Sign of the Boss. So I'll save it for that one, where he sings the Venom Man song. Uh, I think that's in uh, Sign of the Boss, though. But in this one, he goes to his hideout, and it turns out it's rigged up with giant speakers, and they get turned on, and the symbiote gets weakened. These guards come in, uh, Detective uh, Clark is there, someone that Eddie's met before and worked with before. Detective Clark shows up uh, with Detective Steen, and the two of them uh, shoot Eddie with darts and knock him out and capture him once and for all. And what they're doing is they're going to put him on trial. They're handing him over to an uh, agency, like a government agency. There's a place called Randall's Island, which built like a, a sound prison where Eddie can sit in with the suit, and anytime the suit starts to manifest, the sound would reverb out, and it would hurt the suit and send it back down. And then they were also pumping him with dopamine, which they discovered that, you know, and, and also been shown in other books or previous books, where dopamine can act as a blocker, a, like a psychic blocker between, you know, the human host and the symbiote that is, you know, joined with it. So Eddie gets pumped up with the dopamine. He's sitting in a cell. And meanwhile, you have uh, Bastion from the X-Men. I thought this was really cool. So at this point in Marvel history, it was really an interesting time because the heroes, the uh, Fantastic Four and the Avengers, uh, you know, Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, um, uh, Fantastic Four, all these characters, they got, uh, they got sent to another dimension. Uh, they were all fighting an enemy called Onslaught that the X-Men uh, were battling. And Onslaught turned out was secretly Professor X, who had like kind of lost his mind after he absorbed half of Magneto's mind uh, to try to wipe out Magneto and stop him from hurting any more people. He took a lot of Magneto's mind into him and the two fused and he kind of became this entity known as Onslaught. And Onslaught was so powerful that it took the, the combined might of all the Earth's heroes to fight against him, and they had to make a sacrifice. And when they did, Franklin Richards, who's the, the son of the Fantastic Four, Sue Storm and, and Reed Richards, uh, Franklin has like this little uh, ball uh, that he put all the, the heroes in. So after they like sacrificed themselves and were willing to die, his power is, he's a very powerful uh, being. He's, you know, the son of the Fantastic Four, so he's got unstable molecules, but he's also a mutant. Uh, so yeah, talk about OP. And so yeah, we talk about Donny Cates having Dylan being OP. Uh, yeah, Franklin Richards was kind of one of the first ones to do that. Um, and but you know, and so that's why I didn't really like Franklin at first. But over time, I started to like the character because they did semi interesting things with him. Um, and then you know, and now to to still, even still to this day, they do cool things with him. Uh, now that he's like older, he's like a teenager now. So uh, so yeah, so you have uh, Franklin Richards. He saves all of them in a way by putting him in a pocket dimension and saving them. So that's what's happening. And while that happened, uh, now the mutants are being, they're very much hated uh, because it, their leader, Xavier, the guy who's been, you know, protesting peace and, you know, saying like, hey, we just want to live peacefully with humans and mutants and everything. He turned out to be the villain and he, you know, you know, even though it wasn't really his fault, uh, but he turned into the villain and the whole world has kind of started to turn against mutants again. So what the government did was they implemented this plan to bring in a guy named Bastion, who they did no background check on really, but apparently he cleared out, uh, you know, cleared through all their, you know, checks, the checks they did do. And the reason for that is because he's like a, a, a sentinel, a Nimrod type sentinel from the future who has come back to take advantage of this time where there's less heroes and when the world hates mutants. So he leads an operation called Operation Zero Tolerance, which is basically a war against mutants. And uh, and that's a story for something else. I don't do an X-Men show right now, at least. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a great story. I like Zero Tolerance a lot. So Bastion shows up and he's like, uh, Mr. Brock, he's like, you're not a mutant, are you? And he's like, no, I have a symbiote and you know, I'm just a human. He goes, okay. And he goes, well, then you're no of, of no interest to me, but it was still nice to meet you. You know, uh, enjoy your, your time in your cell. And he walks away. So I was like, that's pretty cool that they tied it into all this. Because um, there's even a line later that ties into it where someone says, like, all the heroes are gone and Eddie's like, not yet, or not all of them or something. And then Eddie does something heroic. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. But this story, you have that. You have Agent Smith returns in it. Um, you have Gracia Hidalgo, who's an attorney who's coming in to represent the state. And they're going to, you know, um, you know, they have a case against Eddie Brock saying he kills people indiscriminately. 
he, you know, obviously disagrees. He says, no, I've, I've killed people who are bad. And they're like, well, you've killed a police officer before. And he's like, wait, what? A police officer? And they're like, yes. So we're arresting you for the death of this police officer because we found his body and uh, who, a, a police officer that went missing. Turns out that cop went missing in Amazing Spider-Man 300, which was the first appearance of Venom. Uh, that cop went missing around that time. And then his body showed up sometime later with uh, symbiote stuff in his teeth, uh, showing basically that he was uh, suffocated to some level. Uh, so Eddie is being framed here he, at least he believes that and so he's like yeah i didn't kill a cop i think he killed like one guard from uh the ra not the raft but one of those played the vault i think um i think he killed someone's son there but uh other than that he's like no no he's like this is you know i i paid i guess he said he paid for that crime i don't know but in this one he's like no i'm not like i, I didn't do this i didn't kill this cop and like, well, we disagree. So Gracia Hildago, she's the attorney that's going, you know, against him. So obviously Eddie needs an attorney. And so uh, they, you know, but they need someone to do it pro bono because nobody wants to represent Eddie Brock. Uh, they're just like, no way. And so, of course, when nobody else wants to take a case in New York City, Matt Murdock will. So Matt Murdock uh, hears that Venom is going to be on trial and he's like, I'll defend him. Uh, I will defend Eddie Brock. That's what I like about Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock, he's seen Venom in action. He knows that Venom is, you know, has good intentions sometimes, but does it goes about it the wrong way. He knows that there's brutality in Venom, just like he knows there's brutality in Frank Castle. But yet Daredevil or Matt Murdock always tries to get them to, you know, correct their course you know like he just won't give up on them i love matt murdoch he is a, such a great character and so when he's like i'm gonna take this case i'm like oh yes this story is just got kicked up to an 11 so uh, when matt murdoch comes in of course he's talking to eddie he's like look i'm gonna defend you we're gonna do whatever we can we got to get spider-man on the stand and they're like and eddie's like what like spider-man's not gonna come defend me and matt's like i'm not so sure about that he's like i think i know you guys have a rocky past and he's like no you don't know how rocky our past is like i've tormented the guy i've tormented his you know loved ones and everything and and uh, you know and he's like yeah but i spider-man's a good guy and if you're really clear of this crime which i believe you are then we need someone who's honest uh, in everything and he, you know and then of course he's like yeah but people hate spider-man in new york and he's like not everyone he's like not everyone's j jonah jameson he's like all we need to do is is create a reason of doubt in this and if we just do that that means they have no case you know so that's what he's trying to go he's just trying to just prove that there's there's doubt and that's all he wants to do so meanwhile gracia she decides to call cletus cassidy to the stand so her witness uh, against eddie is cletus and the reason she uh, chose cletus is because it looks like maybe because i don't know if they really answer this in the story so maybe one of you guys can tell me because maybe i missed it i read this book twice by the way trying to find the answer to what i'm about to say i don't know if they actually say who killed that cop i think it's led to believe that maybe it was cletus but I'm kind of curious how if the cop went missing during Venom or Amazing Spider-Man 300, Eddie and Cletus hadn't met at that time yet. So I don't know how Cletus could have got that guy or got that cop. Um, you know, so you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe he did. Maybe Cletus wasn't put in jail at that point yet. So maybe he could have got that cop and hit him somewhere. And then maybe after he got the carnage symbiote, maybe he went back and found the body of the cop and tortured it and, you know, and, and suffocated him or put symbiote in his mouth or whatever. I guess they kind of allude that maybe carnage did it, but I'm trying to think of the timeline. And that, that's the only thing in this story that I struggled with where I was like, ah, what's the timeline? Cause Eddie didn't do it. So Cletus is coming out lying he comes out and says oh yeah i used to be inmates uh you know cellmates with uh with eddie brock and so you know and he confessed killing a cop to me when he didn't have the symbiote he just he confessed strangling the cop to death with his bare hands and then matt murdoch goes oh can i question the witness and they're like yeah sure so of course he, it's his turn and he comes up and goes wait you said eddie admitted to choking the cop out with his bare hands and cletus goes yes that's what i said and he goes okay but we found symbiote stuff in his teeth which means the symbiote had to go, a symbiote went into the guy's mouth and suffocated him that way. Um, so then you're lying and that's all the doubt I need to maybe get my client off of this case. That of course pisses off Cletus. Um, they, they try to put dopamine blockers in him, but something happened where like some kind of, he got like an adrenaline boost or something and he actually turns into carnage and just starts going crazy and trying to kill everyone in the courtroom. And luckily Spider-Man's there. I like how Matt Murdock recruits Spider-Man too, too. He has to subpoena him, right? To get him to come to court. So Matt Murdock, uh, as Daredevil is running around New York trying to sense where Spider-Man is, 
he senses Spider-Man a few blocks away and goes, oh, if he follows this trajectory, he's going to see, and I go here, he'll see me. So he, so uh, Daredevil takes off the, the costume and goes down as Matt Murdock and stands in the middle of the street and a dump truck is coming and it almost hits Matt and Spider-Man comes and saves Matt and swings by and catches him. He goes, he's like, hey man, are you okay? And he's like, hey, you're Matt Murdock, you're that lawyer. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, and you're Spider-Man and here's your subpoena. I need to see you in court. <laughs> I was like, all right, it's pretty goofy in some ways, but it was, it was a very fun moment. It was a very funny uh, way to subpoena Spider-Man. Uh, is by, you know, acting like you're in danger and stuff. So I don't know. I thought that was pretty funny. So that's how Spider-Man gets into court. So now Spider-Man has to fight against Carnage and protect people. Everyone's, you know, leaving. Eddie still has the blockers on. So he's trying to fight through it so he can turn into Venom. And at that point, Daredevil shows up and Daredevil starts fighting Carnage with Spider-Man. So the two of them are, are going, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cletus Cassidy. And uh, while everyone else is trying to run out of there, and uh, I think you even have Trish Tilby, uh, who's like a, a kind of reporter person that's popped up in the comics around this time. She's even like doing a report where she's just dumping exposition. Yeah, so the symbiotes are on uh, dopamine blockers, but it looks like Cletus got through his. And that's how you're getting all of this like dumb exposition. So that's a little weak there. I don't really uh, like that too much. Uh, but it was cool to see Trish Tilby, I guess, in some way. Uh, but then you also had this scientist guy show up who, who was like basically coming in with a more dopamine. And he's like, hey, let's get in there and let's uh, inject Cletus with these and Venom with these. And we can reduce them back down to their, you know, their regular selves. And uh, and that way we can, you know, capture them back up and get proceed with this trial and, and you know, see if Eddie's guilty or not or whatever. So he's coming in with these extra dopamine things. And, uh, and everyone else is just fighting. You see Daredevil go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Carnage, and it's awesome. Like, he's not winning, really. He's getting beat up pretty bad. But there's a line where Carnage goes, like, I'm ready to kill you now. And then uh, Daredevil looks at him, and he's, like, all busted lip and everything. And he's just like, bring it on. <laughs> it's like, oh, so Daredevil, man. Um, but, yeah, he, him and Spider-Man hold their own until Eddie turns into Venom, jumps in, starts fighting. And that's when uh, Daredevil says, look. You don't need to jump in on this. You're Eddie Brock. I need you to be innocent. You know, uh, your lawyer is, you know, fighting really hard for you. And he's like, you need to just go back to your human form. And he's like, no, like your guys are going to lose against Carnage. He's he's beaten you guys before. He's at least beaten Spider-Man before. And Daredevil's like, doesn't matter. We're not going to give up. Let us take this. We'll handle this. What The the guards, like the, the SWAT teams and stuff, they're coming in with sound guns. He's like, look, we'll take care of this. Like, let us do it you just go back and be Eddie Brock and don't get yourself in any more trouble so that you can get, you know, pre proven innocent by this. And so Eddie's like, fine. So Eddie backs away. The others, you know, go back to the fight. And then Eddie sees the doctor and the doctor comes in with the dopamine and he sees that uh, Daredevil and Spider-Man are about to lose and possibly about to get killed. So the doctor's like, it, you know, it's a shame that there's no more heroes around because a lot of them, you know, got sucked away. And this is the line I was talking about earlier. And Eddie goes, not all the heroes you know, got sucked away and he grabs the do dopamine. He's like, uh, he's like, I'm here. And he jumps in and stabs Cletus Cassidy with the dopamine and turns him back in the, you know, tur stabs Carnage and turns him back into Cletus Cassidy. And, uh, and so Cletus sinks to the ground. He's done. He's been defeated. And, you know, Venom standing over him triumphant and then sticks another dopamine in him just to be safe. And they take Carnage or Cletus, they, uh, you know, box him up, take him away back to uh, Ravencroft. And then the trial kind of has to keep going. The judge is still there. And she's like, what do we do? You know, what's going on? And uh, and then, of course, Daredevil's there and uh, Spider-Man, and they're like, you know, they barely survived th thanks to Venom helping them out. Uh, so I like that, that Venom got this cool heroic moment. And I do like that line. It's cheesy, but he's like, yeah, not all the heroes are gone. And he, he steps up and he does the right thing. And then he turns himself in. He's like, you know what? All right, fine. I'll, I'll go back to being Eddie Brock because Agent Smith comes in with like these letters, you know, he passes Trish Tilby and he comes in and he uh, he grabs the this letter and he goes, hey, this is a letter from the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense. I am here on special orders to take uh, Eddie Brock Venom into our custody. And he goes, but he has to come along willingly um, and we will uh, forego all charges. Uh, we, we have the proof that he didn't kill this cop or whatever. So now that, you know, so I hope this gives you a pardon for him and we need him to come with us and we're going to take him away and, uh, and, you know, and, and put him in one of our own, you know, holding cells or whatever. And he's going to, uh, you know, we're going to work something out with him. And so the, the, the judge is kind of like, okay, I guess this, you know, this is dismissed. The, the whole courtroom is destroyed. Like there's a hole in the wall and everything. And there's people outside looking in, taking pictures and the, the news, Trish Tilby's out there. Um, but then Matt Murdock and Spidey are like, oh, he's like, okay, so what now? Like Venom got taken away by some kind of special agent dude. You know, what should we do? And, you know, Spidey's like, well, we'll just keep an eye out for him and see if he causes any more trouble. And then he's like, yeah, I guess so. But, you know, Matt Murdock was like, 
hey, I'm glad I did the right thing. Eddie was innocent of this crime. And I'm, you know, I'm glad I stuck to my morals of just because he's done some scary stuff in the past, um, you know, he's trying to do better and he was not responsible for this crime. And I know that's a hard concept a lot of times for people to realize uh, nowadays where it's like someone may have done crappy things before, um, hopefully not hardcore crappy things that are that really, really hurt or, 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 you know, or killed people or anything. But Eddie, you know, he did, he tormented some, you know, like, you know, Mary Jane and, and, uh, and Aunt May and, and to get back at Peter and tormented Peter. So he's definitely not, a, a, he doesn't have a clean past of being a good person. Um, but but at the, at the end of the day, he is trying to do the right thing and he's struggling with it. And Matt is actually showing empathy for him and helping him out of a bind. Because anyone else was just, everyone, all the other lawyers were like, or attorneys were like, it's Venom. Like, okay, he probably did kill that cop. Who cares? Like, I, I'm not taking that case. I'm going to lose that case. And Matt was the first person and the only person to be like, I'll defend him because I, I after he meets him, he can, you know, tell if you're lying or not. He has that lie detector uh, that Daredevil has. And Daredevil's like, yeah, he's not the killer. And he's like, so I'm going to defend him. It's awesome. It's a good story. And so at the end, though, Agent Smith uh, gives uh, Ed, Eddie's like, why did you, you know, they're in a limo or whatever, and they're driving away and Eddie has his like cuffs on or whatever. And he goes, uh, hey, why did you come and save me? And he goes, look, don't thank me yet. He's like, uh, we we know you didn't do that crime and we have the evidence, you know, to, to give over that shows that you didn't. I don't think they say who did those. So I don't know if it was carnage or not. And I don't know how it was timeline wise. Uh, but he's like, you know, we we uh you know, we brought you here, or the reason I'm bringing you uh, out of that court and taking you with me to the NSA and the the, the squad that I work with is because um, we just got an upgrade and we are have access to more missions. And basically, we need a special agent. So uh, he hands Eddie Brock a badge, and he's like, basically, now, dude, you have a license to kill for the U.S. government. <laughs> and so Eddie Brock, you know, before Agent Venom. Uh, there was this Agent Venom uh, where Eddie Brock is working like kind of with FBI, NSA, mutant hunting groups, uh, you know, to track down bad guys all around the planet. And so we're going to get into that in the next episode when we talk about Venom License to Kill uh, by, uh, I think, I think by Larry Hama. I think so. Yeah, Larry Hama also wrote uh, License to Kill. So, uh, so yeah, it picks up on threads from this. We'll see Agent Smith again. We'll see some other things. But you know, good on you, Larry Hama. I wasn't a big fan of Tooth and Claw, but this one I really liked. I love talking about it. I loved Matt Murdock in this one. He was really great, very empathetic, very uh, heroic in a lot of ways. And uh, and when he was willing to stand up against Cletus Cassidy and was willing to die to buy everyone more time to escape, man, oh man, so good. And Spidey too, like just really great stuff. Fun story. I liked it. What did you think? Have you read Venom on trial? If so, let me know what your thoughts are down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. And don't worry, we have more Eddie Brock week coming up. Starting tomorrow, we're going to do Venom License to Kill, and then we'll get into uh, Sign of the Boss and, you know, Finale and the Venom Effect and a couple, I think those are all the stories coming up, uh, but, and most of them are written by Larry Hama. Well, I think one or two isn't, but most of them are. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I can't wait to share those stories with you guys, and I can't wait to say what you think of this story down below, because I want to talk about it some more. So please comment and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.